What do you think? More volatility ahead? Well, I, I think uh, the volatility is to be expected in a stock market that's kind of dealing with lots of issues. But at the end of the day, the real question is, where do we go from here? And our expectation is, as the economy stabilizes in the second half and trade issues don't get exacerbated further, uh, the markets are probably going higher rather than meaningfully lower. All right. I want to dig into that a little bit more. But, but first, Brian, your thought on where we're at with the markets today, given all the action we have seen in the last couple of sessions? Yeah, it's uh, been quite the ride, hasn't it? And I think that this kind of shows that sometimes the best trade that you can put on in volatile markets is to be long patience. Uh, sometimes that's the best defensive trade because you can just kind of try to ride things out if there hasn't been a significant change in the fundamentals. Now, on my team, we just had our tactical trade council meeting where we kind of discuss our qualitative views. And uh, we were looking at uh, almost uh, overbought conditions in the Treasury market um, when we saw the 10-year Treasury break below. 1.6 percent, at least on a short-term basis. Uh, but more for the longer term, especially on the stock market, we are still a little concerned about a little bit too much optimism built into earnings estimates for the balance of the year, if not going into 2020. We think that, uh, as Krishna said, we'll probably see a little bit of stabilization in the economic numbers. But I'm not sure if the economic numbers are going to translate into really robust earnings per share growth for S&P 500 companies. Krishna, when you look at the turnaround we saw yesterday in equities, it was timed with the turnaround we saw in Treasury yields. Both went higher, right? So the two have been moving together. You could make the same argument again today. What are the bond markets telling us and, and how closely correlated are, are they right now? Well, so the drivers were two things. One was uh, the most important thing was the stabilization of the yuan. Effectively, that basically sent a message to the markets that uh, the, uh, the actors are acting as rational actors as opposed to making things far worse. Uh, the Treasury market is being buffeted by all sorts of flows that uh, haven flows, flows coming in from overseas. But don't read too much into what the 10-year Treasury level is telling you, because there's another part of the bond market, the credit markets, that are far, for, far from being as worried as what you would conclude out of the Treasury levels. Credit spreads have widened some, but they are nowhere close to any extreme levels. Uh, and if you look at the, 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 uh, the Treasury markets, they have been at extreme for quite some time now. Brian, when you mentioned that you're not sure if the forward-looking earnings estimates are going to be met, maybe there's a little bit of optimism in the, in the consensus, I guess, going into the fourth quarter and first quarter of next year when there's supposed to be a rebound. Do you think the market is priced right now based on those forecasts? Or uh, I, I guess I'm trying to get at the difference between what the market implies about the growth outlook for corporate profits and perhaps what analysts are, uh, are looking for. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, sometimes the sell side analysts, what you get uh, with the consensus numbers aren't exactly reflective of maybe what uh, traders and investors are actually setting prices based on. If you had asked me last week when the S&P 500 was above 3,000, I would have said that I think uh, the market was pricing things pretty much in line with what those consensus estimates are. Now that we've gotten a little bit of a downdraft here, a little bit of a sell-off, maybe a little bit less so. Um, I mean, but from a valuation perspective, really, you know, seven to 18 times earnings of next 12 months earnings isn't outside the realm of reasonable. Um, but I think that it is going to be maybe a more increased volat or increased volatility uh, for the balance of the year as a result of maybe shifting expectations of what the growth trajectory of earnings actually looks like uh, for S&P 500 companies. We actually really like more mid cap stocks as opposed to large cap stocks in this type of environment. I think the valuations are a little bit more uh, reasonable in that space. I, I think the, the, the point about earnings growth is an important one. The likelihood that we have spectacular earnings growth is probably small. Having said that, I think if the economic momentum improves in the second half, as I expect, things are going to be somewhat better than what most people, at least the top-down people, are thinking as opposed to the bottom-up people. Why do, why do you think economic, the economic situation is going to improve? It's going to improve because interest rate environment is meaningfully better than what it was last year. So the Fed is not tightening. The overall, uh, interest rate levels are significantly lower. That greases the wheels of stabilization, perhaps better growth outlook than what most people expect.